Joining conference now. This conference is being recorded by the organizer. High on a guy like Jeremy McNichols because you it gives Peyton that to ability to this upgrade that position, class. but not forcing his hand to where he has to because, one, if the Saints draft another first-round running back, given the defensive state, the fans are going to go ballistic. He better start playing game one and putting up 100-yard games immediately because I did it to Ingram his first year when he was behind Darren Sproles and Peter Thomas. And when he was averaging three yards of carry and stuff, that whole first year, you had all you heard was Ingram's a bust. Why don't we trade up to get him? Yada, yada, yada. And we were a playoff amazing team that year. You know, so I don't think Sean Payton is going to go that route. I think it's a guy like McNichols, and maybe it's not McNichols, but he is Christian McCaffrey liked. I mean, that's who he is. He's a smidge slower, played in a little bit of a weaker conference, but can still break tackles. He's phenomenal as a receiver. And the guy's got, what, 53, 54 touchdowns the past two years receiving and rushing. That just screams Sean Payton. He can run every route on the tree for as a running back. And he is a five and a half yards of carry rusher. And you're probably going to find him in rounds three or round four. That's why, because I'm with you on your idea. I, I've been like that for a while now, knowing how Sean Payton is. I mean, he drafts running backs and he picks up UDFA running backs. He loves running backs and wide receivers. So I think he's going to do it like your suggestion. I just don't think he does it in the first round with, with Christian. I, I just don't. I think he picks up a guy like McNichols who is going to have that similar type production because if you draft this guy, that means – Tim Hightower is probably gone, and this is your new third down back. So I think he goes after something like that. But that's just I me. could definitely see Hightower being replaced. And that's why I say McCaffrey – like, I believe Ingram is your bell cow. He, uh, you know, minus the benching and as you as – you, you know, for all the reasons you pointed out, what other guy is going to yell at Sean Payton and have Sean Payton basically put his arm around him and hug him and say, baby, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. <laughs> Nobody else is doing that to Sean Payton. I've never seen that done. Hell, I, I, I remember the, con- the argument last year between Dennis Allen and, 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 and Brandon Browner. And immediately, I looked at that and I oh, well, Brandon Browner's gone. Mm-hmm. He's done. He's done, too. <laughs> but I, but with Mark Ingram, I saw that and I'm like, I saw Sean Payton basically, you know, hug him and try to, you know, console him. And I'm like, wait a minute. So that lets me know Mark Ingram isn't going anywhere. However, mm-hmm. Tim Hightower isn't safe. Daniel Lasko isn't safe. Marcus Murphy isn't safe. And I couldn't even name a third running back for you on this roster, especially if you're going to talk about Tavares Cadet. I don't even consider him a third running back. Yeah, but he's I'm a receiver and a running back number. Exactly. So when I look at it, I say, okay, well, you're going to get rid of Lasko. Uh, maybe, maybe not, because Lasko also plays special teams very well. But you can get rid of Murphy, you can get rid of Hightower, you can get rid of Cadet, and you can replace those three guys with Christian McCaffrey, first or second round. I won't just label him a first round pick, first or second round. And what you would also do in that situation is Sean Payton is the master of finding undrafted running back, un- undrafted free agent running back that come in and make an impact. I believe he can find him a guy that can fill that Tim Hightower role of being the big physical punisher because it, it seems to me as if Sean Payton is trying to duplicate the 2009 roster. And if you're trying to duplicate the 2009 or 2011 roster, if you're trying to duplicate those guys, then you still have the signal caller. You're going to have to rebuild that offensive line, which you've already started to do. And you're going to have to get you a versatile back that can key on that can key the defense. And I think that's what they're missing. Tavares Cadet has proven he can't be that guy. Mark Ingram is going to be more of the Pierre Thomas, but you're still missing Mike Bell and Reggie Bush slash Darren Sproles. Well, Christian McCaffrey solves that problem for you. And maybe Daniel Lasko fills the role of a Tim Hightower. I don't know yet. We, we have yet to see what Daniel Lasko can really do. But I can assure you Sean Payton can find a guy that can fill that role because Mike Cleats Bell – came in at the last minute. Nobody expected Mike Bell to be a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I'm with you, man. It, it's just how I'm viewing that position. It's, And I'm not even saying it can't happen because we both know Sean Payton. If he gets his eye on a guy like he did with Brandon Cooks, it doesn't matter who's available at that pick. 
the Saints usually go best player available, but first round, especially when it comes to offense, they get their eye on somebody because there were several people in the Saints media who saw that coming, who had talked to people in the Saints front office and people connected to the team who knew Brandon Cooks was one of the guys that they just were in love with him. And Mike uh, Dettelier is one of those people who had called that months in advance. So if that's going to happen, it's probably already been decided. Maybe the senior bowl or a little bit later towards the combine, that's where it'll come about. That's where Cooks was uh, apparently, Peyton fell in love with him, was at the combine. So if it's going to happen, yeah, I'm with you. There's nothing to stop it. That's just Sean Payton. When he gets his mind made up, he wants that player. He's going to get that player. It's just tough for me to believe because I always view things from a logical, analytical, sit back and think about it standpoint, which is very difficult if you're a Saints fan because that's not how Sean Payton does a lot of his stuff. Uh, I just don't see it. I'm not saying it's not possible, and I'm not even saying it doesn't fit Sean Payton's M.O. because it certainly does. Maybe it's just me not wanting that to happen. Oh, well, that, that, that this we agree with. Because if I had my way in the Saints draft, I'd love to see two players selected in the first round by the Saints, and I don't care how you got to get them. I'd love to see the Saints be able to draft Reuben Foster and Derek Barnett, mm-hmm. two guys from the SEC, two guys from great programs, two guys that have shown the ability to do it consistently against elite talent. I'd love to see those two guys become future Saints. Now, will that happen? Of course not, because more than likely, Saints picking where they are. If they lose the game to Atlanta, they could pick as low as 10th or as high as 10th, depending on how you want to look at it. If they win the game,
Joining conference now. This conference is being recorded by the organizer. So what we get for them, that's tough because there's really no... You have like we don't have a ton of film to, to go yourself. and show Press and say, hey, twice. this is the guy that you're getting. Because he didn't have a horrible year under Rob Ryan. A lot of tackles, but he's also an A and B gap downhill thumper. He's not a coverage guy. He did better in that one start recently. You know, there's just not a lot that we could probably push forward and say, look, he doesn't fit our system, but he'll fit yours. So I think you'd be looking at optimistically a fourth round type pick for Stephon Anthony if they have to trade him. And that really sucks.